Good afternoon, everyone. Cat's back in Cat's Cooking Kitchen. Glad to see my friends and followers back online watching the video. We're doing a buttermilk biscuit redo because I did a couple things wrong in my first video. First, I cooked the biscuits at 400 degrees, and they're supposed to be at 500 degrees. It's probably why it took me a while. It did not really affect the texture or the quality of those biscuits that I made because they were absolutely wonderful. But I'd like to do, uh, make them again this time. I'll change a couple things. One thing I forgot to do when I made my well in my self-rising flour is you're supposed to pack down the, the bottom of your bowl. Pack it. And just take your hand, make a fist, tuck your thumb in, and just go around, make your well. I'm you, not sure if you can see it since it's all white, but you do. You have flour up on the sides, and then you pack down the middle. And I didn't really do that. Now, since my flour had been sitting around a couple of days... I took a big old spoon and I just stirred and stirred it around a little bit, kind of sifts it up a little bit, you know, gets it ready to be used. So I think, I think we're pretty good to go. Okay, now, she uses her fingers, but I like to be able to see it. And I do have some fingernails, so I don't want to actually get it under my nails anymore than I have to. This is again, and this might be a quarter, quarter scoop, quarter cup, and a little bit more. Want it to get closer to maybe a half cup, and then we just take our, we just drop it right in our well there. Oh, and our buttermilk. We shake it up. And with my floury fingers, and we'll pour in about a cup to a cup and a half. That looks good. The buttermilk. This is all iron. It's something I'm learning how to do. When I was a younger lady, I didn't know how to cook by eye. I, I really needed to know the measurements. And I'm pulling in as I mix the buttermilk and the Crisco together. I'm pulling flour in, not from the bottom at all, but only from the sides. I don't know. You see, I just bring a little in, a little at a time. I keep, keep mixing it up. It's real wet right now, so we need, need to keep bringing in a little more flour. Just a little at a time. Work that in. I think I got plenty. Going to have a big old uh, bunch of biscuits here. But that's okay. They last and I use them up. Tonight for dinner, we're going to have a potato salad that I made this afternoon. It's online both under YouTube and on Cat's cooking corn or cats cooking kitchen uh, on Facebook you can find me on Facebook and this YouTube thing's all new to me so that's got to bring in a little more flour it's still too soft this is uh, this is a really quick biscuit I mean and they are so good I tell you I love them Not quite, not quite where I think they should be. We're getting there. This takes a couple minutes. Let's keep working that dough around until I'm getting a little lower on my flour because my sides are getting low down to the well here. There we go. Get that in there. I don't know. I don't know if it's ready to come out or not. It'll get, 
get going here pretty good. And then we'll put some flour out on the board. It just, it's amazing that you can pour that milk right in here, that buttermilk. And when you take this dough out, this dough is dry as can be on the bottom. So I got a little, little of the self-rising flour out here on my sill mat. You'll notice my towel here. I'm trying to keep it from getting all wet on the stove and getting the powder all those heavy grates and pull them up every day. I've already done that a couple times a day. So I'm trying to keep as much flour out of that as I can. Okay, now we're supposed to be able to pull this up. It's supposed to hold together. And it did. Well, one, but it held together until I got it out of the bowl. Oh, there's a little piece. A couple little dots. There you go. Look at that. Dry as all can be. Really not a problem. Now, you gotta take your fingers, clean them off. Now I got goo all over both fingers, <laughs> or both hands. Reach back in here, grab some more flour. Start working it in until you get a, a dough that's not real sticky anymore. And this is still pretty sticky. So we're just going to keep adding a little flour. Just a little bit at a time. Work it in. You want to be real gentle. Not going to, I do, I call this a soft knead because... You don't want to get in there and keep pushing at it and poking at it, or pretty soon you're going to have stiff, stiff biscuits, hard, not light and fluffy like you want them. So, here we go. That's getting, might be a little sticky in there, but I'll tell you what. These are some of the best biscuits I've ever had, and I made them. So, I'm really loving that. So... So I'm going to wash my hands, it's faster. Okay. Got that done. Uh, we're having tonight, I'm going to make biscuits. I have leftover meatloaf, I have a zucchini that I'm going to saute, and I made some potato salad this afternoon, and we're going to have, have that for our dinner tonight. It's going to be pretty dang yummy. Let's work this in here. Okay. i got to keep my hands floured. I still haven't gotten any biscuit cutters like I want, but I don't even know if I will because I might pick some up if I'm somewhere and I see them. But I just took the bottom and top off of a Contadina tomato sauce pan, and then we're going to start making biscuits, putting them in here. My oven, you heard it beep a couple minutes ago, it's preheated to 500 degrees now. And put the biscuits up here, you want them touching each other. Not sure how many biscuits we'll have. Probably have dough left over. It turned out the other day in my first attempt to make these that they were no, no pie dough left over, but the last biscuit to make it fit, instead of being round, it was kind of a crescent shape. 
So this time, we might not be that lucky. I think I've got a little more dough than I had. Okay. Of course, you notice I had my, my little skillet here all pre uh, pre greased with my Crisco and we're gonna see what we can get here we're gonna get a couple more in here and maybe a couple in the middle but now see I've used up my dough that cut out all I could out of that so we're just gonna mush it back together knead it softly it out. It's about a half inch. I'm telling you, these biscuits would make your tongue come out your mouth and slap your face. It is so good. I am a bread eater. Came from a line of German English. A lot of German in my background. And so they were bread and potatoes. A lot of bread and potatoes when I was growing up. Probably would have been better if they were vegetarians, maybe. I don't know. But I sure do like bread and potatoes. A good hunk of meat to go with them. And let's do get it back together again for one more biscuit. And we're going to have just a little dab of biscuit dough left. I can either, and I don't think I can. I only got a spot for one more biscuit. So we're going to have just a tiny bit of biscuit dough left. I think that's pretty good. Pretty good. So we ended up with one, two, three, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That's as many as I got out of the last one, and this is about exactly the same amount of dough I had left. So I'm going to see if I can't just, it's going to be a baby biscuit. We don't have any babies in this house anymore, but it's going to be a baby biscuit. There we go. Okay, there's that. That is done, done, and done. More washing in my hands. I hope you've all had a good day. I hope lots of good things are going on for you. It's only Tuesday, June 8th. Here in... So I never know what date you might find this online. So I always like to tell you where I'm at. I'm doing this today, the video, but I'll probably post it tomorrow on June 9th, tomorrow's a busy day for me, but it was another sticky day, it wasn't a good day for me to make my garlic toast that I talked about in a couple other videos, and got people waiting on me, I know, but I do want to make sure that when I make it, it comes out perfect. I don't want I don't want the humidity and the heat to cause me any grief when I'm making that and I have some of my caramel corn I want to make for everybody. So, all right. Ovens at 500 degrees, biscuits are going in. Got my skillet here have to get another skillet out to warm up the meatloaf. But if you're watching me cook dinner in real time tonight. And that's pretty, uh, that's good for you to see because you can tell. I don't take a lot of time, people. I, I am past the age where I will spend the whole afternoon in the kitchen getting something ready to eat. It's just not going to happen. So, I'm going to cut my 
zucchini, kind of like that. It's probably a little under half an inch, a little smaller, between a quarter and a half. Uh, these cook down pretty good if you've made squash. I love them. I, I love them in all kinds of things. So, here we go. Get down here, this is a nice, nice size zucchini. I got my little buddy Daisy over here. Let's see. Daisy, are you down there? Hey. Hi. Where are you? <laughs> there she is. She's always waiting on something, something to fall off the counter that she could probably scarf up and eat. So, okay, that's going pretty good. I'm going to add a little bit of butter to my skillet. Turn the heat down a little bit to low now, now that I had it on medium. Warming up. Okay. We'll see what I feel like doing here in a minute. I'll let them saute a little bit and when they're just about ready, I like to sprinkle a little bit of shredded Parmesan cheese on them. And, oh, it's just so good, so good. And I hope you'll look up my potato salad recipe. I had now the meatloaf recipe I did yesterday did not get posted to YouTube because I kind of messed it up. And so there's a part one and a part two on my Facebook, Cat's Cooking Corner. And you can see that. And I'm not going to get quite all those in there. That's okay. Make room much room as we can. Maybe we get a couple more in. I'm only a couple short, but as it shrinks up, I'll just add those other three pieces. I have three more pieces in here. What I'm going to do now, I'm just going to sprinkle a little salt over the top. I think I'll use my other pepper. I like coarse pepper, but I think for the zucchini, we just want to go lightly over. There we go. Okay, and I should put some. This is garlic powder, y'all. So, what's not to like? Salt, pepper, and a little garlic sauteed in some butter. So we'll turn the heat back up a little bit. It's not sizzling as much as I'd like to see. Oh, gosh, garage door's open. Maybe one of these days I'll show you that messy garage. And to warm up the meatloaf, I'm just going to slice it and put it in that non-stick skillet over there. And it's going to be on medium heat for now. Now this meatloaf was a little crumbly and meatloaf does that sometimes but I'm telling you it it is the darndest flavor. So and I don't care if it crumbles because it just really doesn't matter because it just tastes so good. So let's get some of this. Crumbles. As a matter of fact, sometimes I just crumble it up and put it over bread, or the biscuits actually would work, uh, like a sloppy joe. So, we'll just take off a few hunks of our meatloaf here. I love... Leftover meatloaf. Okay. 
and so does my husband. So we're, we're blessed to both. You know, I don't understand. I, I mean, I don't understand because we use up every bit of what we make. And uh, there's people that'll, that will cook this dinner and have a third of it or something left over because there's maybe just two of them. And so they won't eat it. And they throw it away. Um, you know, there's some things that just don't keep very well, but most things, you can pack them up and, you know, do something different with them or just reheat them. I don't think there'll be any of this uh, zucchini left because we really, really like that. So we eat that a lot. I've even taken leftover meatloaf and made a batch of chili with it. It's really good too. I'll have to do chili, but right now it's so hot I don't even think about making chili, but we will get to it. And here we're gonna flip these over. Oh, they're looking good. Nothing better than, oh. If you've not tried fried zucchini or uh, the yellow, which is summer squash, and it, I've got some of that too, so I've gotta use that up in the next day or so, because I've had it a couple of days now. We'll just go over lightly again on this side with just a little bit of salt. Just a little bit of pepper. We like pepper, so if I get too much, it's not a big deal here. And then lightly, just, there it goes, starts to sprinkle. Okay. Would it also be good in there if I had uh, thought about it soon enough and got a bigger skillet out, you can add some sliced onion in there and have onion and zucchini together. Oh my goodness, that is so good, so good. So um, we have, I have a meeting tomorrow and so I'll be gone from 10 o'clock to probably one o'clock. So that's, a, that's my, a good three hour chunk out of my day. The three hour chunk I usually use to get something cooking. So, but we were going to have uh, hamburger steak tonight with grilled onions and mushroom gravy. And I just was doing some videos this afternoon and I just kind of ran out of gas. So, I gotta stop trying to get so much done in one day. I have four Afghans I need to start crocheting on. That's gonna take a little bit of time. I gotta have one done in a couple of weeks, another one done. I'd like to have both of them done in a couple of weeks and then I have until November to do some baby Afghans. And I just, I just love crocheting. The first two Afghans are for a uh, six and three year old and then the newborns in November. So very excited. I didn't even put my apron on again. I should, but I try to remember, but sometimes I get in a hurry and start getting stuff done. I just turn on the camera before I even thought about it. Okay, that's good. Oh, those biscuits, almost done. See, it sure makes a big difference when you <laughs> put them in at the right temperature. Oh, my hair's just going everywhere. Um, yes, the other day when I did it, I mistakenly set the oven at 400, and it took dang near 20 minutes to get them done. So this extra 100 degrees at 500, uh, you want them to be soft and fluffy inside. You don't want them hard as a rock. And they weren't. They were very good buttermilk biscuits. But as you can tell, it wasn't it wasn't the instructions that I was given. So yeah, looks like we're gonna have 
Yeah, sloppy Joe today. We're just going to crumble this up. And instead of what you would think of as regular sloppy Joe, it's going to be barbecue. Instead of ketchup, I used barbecue sauce yesterday on my, and it was very good, very good. So, since it's falling apart on me, I'm going to just let it. And maybe add a little ketchup to it, kind of dry. Oh, ketchup's about gone. I have another bottle out in my pantry in the garage. Add a little ketchup and a little more barbecue sauce. I like, this is uh, Sweet Baby Ray's, the original. And you can use whatever you want. When I'm cooking uh, low carb, there's a, uh, what's it called? Sugar, oh my gosh, it's sugar free. Oh, it's been so long I can't remember what it's called. And I don't happen to have any right now. Got the picture of the guy on it. Hughes. I think the last name was Hughes. Oh, look at these. I don't know if you can see these. I can't dip it too much because of the butter. Can you see that? Let me bring you a little closer. Maybe that'd help. Look at that. That good? Oh, it's been a while since I've had any zucchini, so bring it on. I love it. Oh, that's good. Get them a little crispy on the edges there. It looks like everything's going to be done about the same time, which is awesome. Because then I can. do a little taste test in front of you. Got to check those biscuits again real quick because they can get done on me really quick. Oh, yes. I got a little too much flour on the top. Usually I'll butter them, run some butter on them, but look at this. Aren't those yummy looking? Oh. Man, my exhaust fan has an automatic thing on it. It's so temperamental. Shut this off, my help. That 500 degree oven What's getting it on. Oh. So good, so good. My husband loves steak sauce on his, on about any kind of meat, but uh, I don't have any, we ran out. So instead, what he'll do is he'll use the Worcestershire sauce instead. in the middle. Normally I'd 
have a little gravy with this, but I want to save the what we have left from the meatloaf dinner last night. I want to make uh, add that to the baked steak or the hamburger steak and uh, make that even extra special tomorrow. So let me get a little plate. I was taught when I was growing up that, let's see what would come out easy here. This one will. Oh, look at that. Oh, I was told when you want to open a biscuit, you use a fork, not a knife, because a knife will smash your biscuit down. So now we have. Add some butter. Now, could use may mayonnaise or ketchup or whatever, but I'm just going to use butter. Take a big old bite. It's hot. Mmm. Very good. Very good biscuit. I'm getting better at it. It's only the second time I've made it. And I'm very, very happy with it. And what I'm going to do is... I'm just going to make me a little meatloaf sandwich with my biscuit. Kind of like a sloppy joe on a buttermilk biscuit. And I... Betcha it's going to be good. Mm. Mm. That is absolutely delicious. That is a great way to use up your uh, meatloaf leftovers. Let's taste our. Hmm. Oh, I should have brought.